Hey guys, good good day. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to another class. Yes, like I promised you guys, I will be releasing videos every week, once per week, so that we can study various ways in which you can pass literature examination or understand literature better right okay so as promised i'm here again and today we will be talking about how to answer context questions in literature examination how to answer context questions in literature examination so i don't know sit tight and listen i hope you learned something by the end of this lecture now Context questions are questions about a particular passage that is taken out of a play. They are usually set for public examinations such as WIAC, NECO, and other degree examination. Now, context questions are questions that are, are set from a particular passage taken out of a play. Usually a play, you understand? Usually a play. You know, most times in the exam, we see model and unseen prose and unseen poetry. Well, context questions are, are usually taken out of a play. And over time, the kind of context questions we have always been coming across are Shakespearean questions. Students in Nigeria, Africa, and even beyond can bear me witness. Shakespearean questions. We find them in most of our internal and external examination, both our private examinations in school and our public examination. We find ourselves being given Shakespearean question questions from William Shakespeare's text Julius Caesar a midsummer nine dream or cello Romeo and Juliet and all that so those are the kind of questions sometimes we even have questions from she stoops to conquer yes a raisin in the sun we have questions like that Not usually from plays the classicals now these questions have been taken out from we call them context questions sorry yes now it is aimed at testing your knowledge of the play and your understanding of the language this this is to ascertain or explain what led to a particular incident or speech and what came after that is general idea now guys if you're expecting a context question in an exam what you need to do is to read that play if you have not read the play then we have a problem I'm being honest with you this is like the gospel truth if you have not read the play then we have a problem because you need to read the play to be able to attempt the questions now let's take Shakespeare's plays for an instance let's look at Othello if you're expecting a context question on Othello in Wayek or Neck or in Midsummer Night Dream or whatever and you have not read it then you will, you will most likely fail that question because you are going to bring bring out a passage from the play or a scene or an act and you are expected to answer questions on them so first things first you need to read it yes i know most students especially students here especially african students they find all you know let me not say most some students you know they find it really difficult attempting shakespearean questions now let's look at one or two tips on how you can answer Shakespearean questions, context questions. Let me progress. To achieve this, you need to understand the play to the core. And if you don't understand the play to the core, you have a problem. Understanding the play begins from reading it. If you go and read summary and think you can pass context questions, you have a problem. Yes, because here are the question here are the type of questions you expect. Who made that statement? To whom and on what occasion? Are you getting it? You'll see questions like, who is speaker A? They'll bring out an extract from a Shakespearean play, like Othello. They'll now tell you, who is speaker A? Who is speaker B? What were they talking about? Who were they talking about? On what occasion? Are you getting it? So, if you want to read a summary of 
um, Ocelo, how do you expect to pass a context question? Like, how, how, how? If you can, if you did not read the text, you will not know who made a statement. If you did not read the text, you will not know who did this and who did that. So how do you expect yourself to pass a Shakespearean question? Are you seeing it? So most of all, most times we are the at architects of our own problems. You may also be asked to give connotative and denotative meaning of an underlined sentence. Context questions require excellent understanding of the selected text. Take note of the word excellence, guys. Underline excellence if you are writing this down or do something or take note of it. You have to you need to have excellent understanding. You understand? Sometimes in context questions, most of you who go through past questions, maybe WIAC, NECO, GCE, SAT, or whatever, sometimes they underline a sentence in that extract and they ask you to tell us what it means. Now, if you have not read that scene well and read what really transpired, you might not be able to really interpret what that particular scene was talking about. Are you getting that? But if you have read it well, why not? You should be able to tell us what that particular sentence meant. Now, Shakespearean text, most times, the language is complex. Yes, we are, it is not the kind of English we speak now. And that is why some of these Shakespearean texts we read comes with glossaries, comes with, you know, its own dictionary so that I can look up some of these words what he actually meant by that statement yes but if you go and read only summary huh, we have a problem how do you want to manage it how do you want to attempt all these questions are you getting it now therefore students must pay attention to the following root, rules when reading a drama text now one when reading a drama text, identify the writer and the title of the play where the passage is extracted from first. The first thing you do is, of course, you pick a text titled Othello, playwright William Shakespeare. Title, okay, A Written in the Sun, playwright Lawrence Hansberry. Are you getting it? If you haven't done that, we have a problem. You should be able to identify simpler and short so that the moment you even see a scene sometimes you write the extract and say speaker a why did you do this the moment you see it you know oh this is shakespearean sometimes the language tells me when i read from this journal i know that this is is this person that wrote it when i read from here i know this is are you getting it now pay attention to the plot of the drama very important note Take note of all the conflicts that occur in all the acts and scenes and also the various ways the conflicts are resolved. This boils down to reading. Summary might help you give you an, a general overview of the plot, but if you don't read, you will not understand. Excellent understanding. That is the word. Excellent understanding. Pay close attention to the lexical meaning of the words in the text by underlining some lexical terms. Yes, especially Shakespearean text. When I teach my students this text, I know what I do. They can bear me witness. I always tell them to underline words they find strange. Sometimes, of course, we act our plays. I ensure they act Shakespearean plays because that is the only way they can understand these plays. We act Shakespearean plays. Now, when we come across some strange words, we always underline. After the class, we now go back and we look up some of these words. Some students do it in the class. We look it up together and we correct ourselves. Okay, this means that. That means this. Are you getting it? So some of these terms you need to underline because you might find it in your exams. Yes. Be, this is because you may interpret. Yes, they are English words, but not the English words we use now. So we can actually interpret the meaning of phrase in some lines. Ensure that you have adequate knowledge and understanding of the subplot and play within a play, if any. Not all Shakespearean plays have play within a play. But A Midsummer Night Dream is one of his plays that I know. It has a play within a play. If you cannot remember, there is a play within a play in A Midsummer Night Dream. It was a wonderful play, right? Yes, this year and all. So, always take note of that. You need to understand the plot and subplots. Now, most of these extracts are gotten from most Shakespearean plays. We have five acts, act one to five, and each act can have up to three, four scenes. If you read the text well, you should be able to understand, under, uh, know the scene where each extract is gotten from. Identify the cast or characters in the text. Casts are identified by what they say and what other casts say about them. You must stick to her. You must stick to that. Sorry, that's an error. You must stick to the following, I meant. Now, 
in understanding you have to understand the cast and the characters sometimes some of you know remember the statements you find in your contest questions but you forget who made that statement that is why you need to you need to take note of their names their full names are you getting it guys thank you now here are questions you come across in contest question who is the speaker if you've not read the text you wouldn't know you can't just assume to whom when that is, has to do with time now if you read the book you should be able to know where now it could be a street in venice a palace in venice the duke's chambers the council chamber or fellow's bedroom there are so many venues if you do not if you do not read the text you would not know where these venues are but if you read the text like well you take it one step at a time you'll be able to identify where these venues are at least you remember that this this statement was at the beginning part probably act one then you know that act one was acted here are you getting it so it's that simple Shakespearean plays are usually divided into five acts so it is very easy to know when but if you do not read the text I know I'm emphasizing this guys because I have students who always struggle and these videos are here to help you okay we'll be uh, we'll be analyzing some of Shakespearean text we'll be analyzing a Thomas line dreams soon so you need to subscribe so um and what transpired in the scene in doing this you should be able to link each setting that appear in each scene and act with the characters you understand you should be able to add, identify each setting and that is where now pay attention to the setting of each act or scene because it will aid you in identifying where the speech is made and what transpired in the scene now some of you make this mistake when you pick a play you see those parts written in brackets where they tell us sometimes it's to be a regular play we do even a nigerian play you know the setting is uh, a, a dining room there's a cup on the table um uh the, we have newspapers stashed beside and a jug with hot water we could see the steam rising up and some of you don't read that part because some novels that part could even in a scene that part could take take up to one page describing the setting but if you must answer contest question that those are the parts you pay attention to what some of you do so that you finish the novel on time you just ignore that part and you start reading you just start reading you go to the next scene they'll try to describe so you don't even read what is written in the description you don't read you don't want to read the intro to that scene all those parts in the bracket mm -mm, it's not necessary for you you just want to read the dialogue john ken and joy they're all speaking are you getting that that is all that is what most of you want to pay attention to in examination are you getting that so what i want you all to know is that and therefore to pay attention to the setting context questions lay emphasis on the wh questions who whom where when pay attention to the setting very important if you can understand these key points i'm giving you guys you don't have a problem i can assure you okay now when studying a drama text pay full attention to the literary devices or figures of speech used by the playwrights literary devices figures of speech we can never overemphasize it yes when you come across a figure of speech maybe a play on words oxymoron and all that or dramatic irony you know tragedy and all that pay close attention take notes i cannot imagine a student reading a novel and not having a pen and a paper most of the novels i read especially when they are my own copy I would have underlined and underlined and underlined. Of course, when it's not mine, I'm being too careful because I need to return it. So I have to write what I took from that novel down. But how can you be reading a novel and you don't have a pen and a paper? Especially when you are, you have to really study that novel to answer some questions. It's possible you picked a book to read for fun. That's that about that. But when you need to start, you need to take down, write down some key things you noticed. So you should be able. I know you. You see past questions write down some key points guys are we together sorry so that is that about answering context questions if you know these little things i just gave you i think we've come to the end yeah if you are able to memorize and understand these little key points i just gave you i assure you you won't have a problem seriously these are just all you need to do to be able to pass 
past Shakespearean texts, past questions on Shakespearean texts in your exam, answer questions on context questions in your exam. These are the key points. You need to please, if you know that you are expecting a question, probably you're in Nigeria or abroad, you are supposed to write on one of Shakespearean texts or any other playwrights, you know, any of the classics. Please, you need to read those books. I beg you, do not read summary. Summary will only, it won't help you. Because this summary, they'll just pick one or two things and put there and you think you've known it all. I would even suggest you read the book, then probably you read the summary to consolidate what you have read in the book. Probably you did not understand it well. Probably it was a little difficult. Are we together, guys? Are we together? So don't, don't, you have to be really careful. You have to be so careful. Are we together? So answering contest questions shouldn't be a problem for you. Like I told you, I won't waste much of your time today. I love talking, but I have come to the end of today's um, lecture. Please, my comment section, I always demand. I would want you guys to ask me questions. I don't know it all, but the little I know, I can most definitely provide some answers. Ask me questions. Go to the comments. Slide in. Type in your questions. I am here to answer them. This is what I do. I'm a teacher. I'm Miss Gift. Ask me questions. Inbox. You know, I got one or two messages. Inbox. That's cool. I would respond to you. Wherever you are in this world, in the country. You need to. Okay? And please give this video a thumbs up please i need this and click the subscribe button Beep. just click on it it doesn't take anything out of you so that at least especially if you look forward to these videos if you need it daily tips i hope this video has been helpful to one or two persons i hope it has i really do i really do I appreciate your feedbacks suggestions observations now click the like button thumbs up give this video a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you know anyone especially in the country in west africa africa and the world that needs this knowledge feel free to tell the person abc of literature with miss gifty they should subscribe okay they should subscribe okay i think i'll be signing off now <laughs> thank you guys so much Bye.